Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we are currently ready to finish up our final mission of this series. It's been a long series, no doubt about that. It was a pretty ambitious one from the get-go. But let's lift this off. We need to get these Kerbonauts home. We're going to want to go on the 270 marker here because we want to hit a retrograde orbit. So, oh, that's so heavily loaded. Okay, <laughs> we have very little thrust to wait here. That is exciting. And that's, of course, because we're fully refueled from our base. So that is absolutely wonderful. I want to be going pretty much straight up at this point. Our apoapsis height is not nearly as high as I'd like it to be before we start getting too much vertical speed. So how much vertical speed, or rather, how much height do we think we want here? Well, I think it's not so much height as it is time to apoapsis, which we can see is currently about 30 seconds, and we should probably get that to about a minute or so, is my guess. And then from there, we're going to go to horizontal velocity up, and we're just going to go right on over to 270. Well, we're going to do it in the opposite order, actually. So that'll be fine. We're currently at about 45 seconds to apoapsis, about a 15 second more burn until we're there. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one, mark. We're heading over on the 270 marker, and I want to get as much horizontal speed as possible at this point. Now, technically, uh, I did not nail that. Technically, we're at 271. And, nope, go to Kill Rot, please. I want this to be right on 270, right at the horizon. Right there. Fantastic. So that'll be good. We're building up a fair amount of horizontal speed, but you can see here, time to apoapsis is dropping, and that is expected. We may have to go to prograde here. Our thrust to weight is quite low. But I'm keeping an eye on that apoapsis height. It's going up, but not very much. We need about five times the horizontal speed right now. And our vertical speed is getting eaten up pretty quickly. So I think we're probably going to have to get some more verticality here. It's just a little bit hard to judge that, right? And to be clear, this would be a lot more uh, efficient on Minmus, but we're doing it on Moon, because that's what's happening in reality. It turns out Earth doesn't have a Minmus. I know that's shocking, but that, that is indeed how that, how that turns out. So I'm going to bring us up a little bit. We're basically at our apoapsis. I want time to apoapsis to be going up. So I'm going to put us about here. It doesn't have to be going up very much. So let's just set it here. We're about halfway to our horizontal speed orbital velocity target, but we're not quite there yet. We just need to get ourselves a little bit more time. Our thrust to weight is quite low when this thing is fully fueled. So we are doing some gravity battling here, which is not hugely surprising. I'm just going to hold us here until the time to apoapsis is about 30 seconds or so, probably. And then we'll go back to horizontal up. So we've got 25 seconds, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Okay, horizontal velocity up. Are we still on 270 here? It's looking good. We can see time to apoapsis is dropping, but it's dropping slowly. This is definitely not dropping at a rate of one second per second. That's great. We're currently at about 400 meters per second horizontally. We need about another 100 meter meters per second. I think we've got plenty of time to do that. So let's push this right on up to about a 20 kilometer apoapsis or so is going to be our target. Just watching that time to apoapsis is still going down but it's definitely going down reasonably slowly. And it's gonna start going up very soon. Because very soon we're going to start missing the moon. Excellent. We're at about 490, okay, 500 meters per second. And this is very, very close to orbital velocity at this point. We can see now time to apoapsis is going up. This is looking perfect. We want to continue to burn here until our apoapsis is about 20 kilometers, is what I consider to be safe orbit around the moon. It's actually a little lower than that, to be sure, but... Okay, this is going quickly now. 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, there we go. That'll be absolutely fine. 
at the apoapsis, we're going to want to circularize this or just go for the lunar gateway. I'm not sure how that rendezvous would go. Nowhere near. Okay, so we do not want to go for the lunar gateway yet. Instead, we're just going to circularize this right about here. It's going to be a very small burn, about 5.7 meters per second. Looks good. We'll align to that node. And we can see we're definitely going to be bringing back a lot more fuel than we left with. Keep in mind, we left with this tank full and these tanks all empty. So as long as this tank is full and these tanks are... Th these tanks have something in them, then this is net fuel positive for us, which is absolutely fantastic and an excellent proofing of this system, which is all we need to do here is prove the system. And we're not going to go beyond this as far as like developing a moon base or something like that goes, because that's all very speculative. Even this is speculative at this point. I want to throw that out there. This has not been done yet, and uh, it may or may not happen. We'll see. 30 seconds. 20, 10, and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, mark. Okay, so that's the circularization. Looks good. We'll put this in kill rot, and now we, of course, need to look for a rendezvous. How are we doing here? Point 2? I don't think we need to do any sort of a... Any sort of an inclination change. That seems absolutely fine. Let's bring this out to about here and change our timing on that. We're going to have to wait in orbit, looks like. Okay, that is absolutely fine. We can do that. It'll be around here or so. Half a kilometer separation? We can definitely work with that. Let's align this to the node. And let's get ready for this burn. It'll be in about an hour, so of course we're going to want to warp forward. Cool. So we're in a reasonably circular orbit at this point, and this will be absolutely fine. We'll physics warp as we get a little bit better aligned. There we go. About 40 seconds left until this burn. 30, 20, 10, and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, mark. We should probably consider furling these uh, Gigantors before we go in for the docking maneuver. They're kind of big and in the way. We'll see what we want to do about that as we get a little closer. 3, 2, 1, 0. Perfect. That will be ideal. This is 0 0.5 kilometers separation. Looks great. 49 meter per second relative speed. Not too shabby. Let's go to about the descending node. I think is about the right time. And let's just make our way on in. Cool. I saw the square. There it is. Lunar Gateway is here. Excellent. We're going to want to move over towards target retrograde. So relative velocity minus. We're going to need to do a little bit of a... Actually, we probably don't need to do much of a correction maneuver at all here, do we? Now that I think about it. I don't think we need to do a correction maneuver. We're half a kilometer out, which is very, very close, right? So I think this is reasonably fine. We'll bring ourselves to a halt as we come in, and then we'll assess where we need to go in terms of docking, because I'm not sure what direction we're approaching from here. Okay, so 49.2 meters per second. Our thrust to weight is pretty low, so we're going to want to burn this a little earlier than I feel like we probably should. Okay, so we're loading in the station right now. There it is. We're about two kilometers away from it at this juncture. I'm going to retract these solar panels. 1.8 kilometers, and we're moving in at about 50 meters per second. So this is absolutely fine. 1.5 kilometers. I'm going to start this burn at one kilometer, and I might regret it, but let's see how that goes. So starting it here. Uh, slightly early, but that's okay. Okay, so I want to do a little bit of correction here. So I'm just putting it about here, and we're steering this over towards the target. We're now at 5 meters per second and heading much more towards target. So that looks good. 
Five meters per second is relatively controllable. Oh, we were just in an e or actually we're going into a not not like a lunar eclipse. Well, this would be a lunar eclipse from the perspective of Kerbin. But uh, yeah, that that's exciting. It, it's dark now. Cool. So we've got about 500 meters to go here. There is a little bit of correction to be done here. I'm just wondering where we're coming in at. This is actually pretty good as far as our desired docking port goes. We want this to be our target here. So I'm going to get ourselves a little bit of burn up here. Specifically, what I'm looking to do is correct our velocity towards that port. Okay. So we're going to need to turn it up over this way. Why are these lights flashing at us? Okay, let's go to relative velocity minus. We are currently going to want to bring this to a halt once we get a little closer in. And then we're going to want to flip this around. And then I'm going to line these up. Is this indicating like a lack of electricity or something? It shouldn't be. It is very dark right now. We've got that eclipse going on. So that is a thing. For sure. Okay, so we're 50 meters out right now. I want to bring this in still a little closer. So we are currently about 40 meters out. And I want to bring this in to about 25. Okay, I'm going to call this good. This is close enough. Three, two, one, zero. Okay, we started going the other direction. That's fine. We need to get flipped around here. I overshot that a little bit. Man, it's dark. It is very, very dark right now. <laughs> it's uh, maybe a little hard to see what's going on. And if that's the case, I apologize. It uh, is, is very much an eclipse happening right now. So that's cool. I'm going to grab our shielded docking port here, and we are going to turn the light on. We're also going to open this shield. Okay, I'm going to hop over to the station. We're going to control from this docking port, and the light is allegedly on. We do have power. Okay, I just wanted to double check that. It's very hard to see right now, and getting harder. So we're going to set this as our target, and I'm going to point at target. Okay. So we're just making our way around to relative velocity minus, and we... Okay, I can't see anything that's happening right now. <laughs> it is very hard to tell what's happening unless we are like this, looking at silhouettes. Like, even the moon is incredibly dark at this moment. Like, if we were to come out here, we can see this is the umbra of the Earth, or rather of Kerbin, and uh, yeah, it's, it's very dark. In that area. So that is definitely a thing. Okay. I'm going to do this to put us at a relative motion of zero. Now, we're still lining up. I want to point at target here. And this should be pointing at target as well. We should, in theory, be able to head in without any real issues here. I want to change our rotation ever so slightly to be about like this or so, in theory. And we're just going to have to go in in utter pitch darkness. So we're going to have to go in via almost entirely instruments here and silhouettes. That will be exciting, no doubt about it. Let's get ourselves a little bit of velocity heading in, 0.2 meters per second. I expect this to be a clean docking. This shouldn't really be an issue. So we're about three meters away right now. I don't even think we'll need any monoprop for this. Okay, we are now allegedly docked. It's kind of hard to tell, <laughs> but allegedly we are indeed docked. I'm going to turn the smart ASS off for the moment and freeze our physics. I think I'm going to uh, warp us past this eclipse, which is going to take a minute. Okay, now we can see things again. Fantastic. We managed to get docked in the pitch darkness, but what I want to look at first is how much fuel we have here. So, we launched with this tank completely full. So let's move this fuel over and we'll look at just how much fuel we were able to get from the surface. 
This, of course, means that we're basically net positive. Which is absolutely great. I want to move that fuel in here. So, the amount of fuel that we're able to get per landing going forward, in theory, if there were going to be more landings going forward, which there aren't, would be this. So, this is 8279 liquid fuel and about 10k oxidizer. That's not bad, all things considered. All of this fuel can now be transferred over to our tanker over here. So this is currently not full, this is not full, this is not full. I also didn't use any monoprop on the way down, correct? Or the way up. Right. So that's great. So next up, of course, we want to transfer this fuel all out, and we're just going to store that in our fuel storage tank. And I don't think this is going to completely fill up the fuel storage of the of the Lunar Gateway here. We also don't need to loot any fuel from here, because we're fuel positive. Yeah, this is not going to quite fill it up, but another trip would. So that's really, really solid. Now, of course, we need to bring our Kerbanauts home, and we need to transfer them right on over to the Orion, which is a little janky, but looks like we are able to do it from here. Looks good. So we'll just get all of that transferring done, and they are ready to head home on their final voyage. So we're going to undock here. There we go. We'll see if these Gigantors survive re-entry. That'll be interesting. But I want to RCS. We're going to monoprop. Oh, right. We can't monoprop away from this at all. Well, let's just make our way over here. I want to kill Rot. We shoved ourselves a little bit, but I want to just push this over. Okay, we're clear. Sounds good. We're going to want to position ourselves at surface retrograde here. Or rather, orbital retrograde. No, prograde. No, retrograde. Wait, I'm confused. No, we want prograde. And we want prograde when we get about here or so. Right. <laughs> Why was I confused by that? I don't know. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. How many times have we done this maneuver in this series? It's a lot. I don't know why I was confused by it for a moment there. We're just going to bring this down to about 20 kilometers, as we have been. Nice, safe altitude. Looks good. And at this point, this is a very routine return mission. So this is the direction we're going to want to go, away from the station, which is solid. But that is going to be, not now, but in 30 minutes. The question is, if we warp, do we warp inside of the station? We should be moving away from it very slowly. Yes, that looks solid. At least for now. Hopefully we remain clear as we get into position here. This is looking less auspicious. Ooh. That is basically right at the station. Okay, I'm going to give ourselves some speed down this way so that we clear the station. <laughs> okay. So that's absolutely fine. We're going to bring this in in about 40 seconds, 20 seconds, 10, and 3, 2, 1, 0, mark. And we are out of here. Our relative speed to the station is awkward, no doubt about that, but not a big deal, all things considered. We've got lots of Delta V to make this happen. No problems. What? Cool. So... It's not actually this maneuver amount that matters. What actually matters is this periapsis number, and that should be relatively good, assuming that when we exit here, we don't have problems. 2133, okay, that didn't change at all. That's good. Let's see what happens when we exit the moon. Any changes? Nope, okay, that looks absolutely solid. We are going to fall on down. At this point, I'm going to manually warp, and we are going to position ourselves in surface surface velocity minus. So we're just going to bring this guy right on down. We'll go into surface mode. There we go. And let's begin falling. And here we come. Excellent. We've now entered the atmosphere, and we are going to retract our solar panels. We'll see if these Gigantors survive. Do we want to do a re-entry burn? That might make them more likely to survive, to be honest. They're already overheating. I'm doing a re-entry burn here, but I think they're going to go away. 
If they go away, we're gonna cut this re-entry burn and just go with our heat shield. Yeah, they're gonna blow. They're gonna blow up. <laughs> Absolutely, they're gonna blow up. It's okay. We didn't actually intend to bring those gigantors, so that is fine. Let's get rid of this. Fantastic. And down we go. We do see some heat from our communitron. However, that has not previously burned off. We've done this re-entry before. We've not had any issues here. But I'm not surprised that those Gigantors burned off, to be completely honest. That is deeply, deeply unsurprising. We're slowing down considerably at this point. Although we have a fair amount of speed still. We're only 30 kilometers up, though. So it's absolutely fine here. We are below orbital velocity now. That's looking absolutely great. And it looks like we're going to have a water landing, which is what this is designed for. So that is, once again, perfect. And it's actually a good thing because this only has two parachutes, doesn't it? Hmm. Okay. Well, it's probably fine. Especially with a water landing, it should be absolutely okay. Beautiful. So we decelerate nicely. We're down below a kilometer per second. Drogues are now available, and let's get those mains out as soon as we can. We don't need Smart ASS on anymore. And there's the mains. Fantastic. Let's physics warp our way on down. And this is our final Artemis mission. So we're actually finishing a little bit ahead of schedule here. That's pretty nice. I like it. I mean, honestly, the series has gone on long enough. It's generally not a great thing to have series that go on this long, but I do it anyway because I like it. <laughs> not because the algorithm likes it. So downward we go, and this is definitely the end of this series. We are, si we are solidly in the future at this point by quite a number of years, and it becomes very nebulous what the plan is going forward from here. So that is absolutely great. I'm going to be following this up with a KSP2 game. So that's going to be going into this slot. And I'm thinking about having that be like a... I, I previously did a KSP1 solar system tour where we landed on every body. And I'm thinking about doing that with KSP2 as well. Maybe it's land and return from every body. I've done that in KSP1. Eve got spicy. We'll see how that goes. That's very ambitious, no doubt about it. Let's bring these guys right on back, and let's talk a bit about how this series ended up going. I'm really pleased with how this series ended up going, I think. We've achieved pretty much everything we've looked to do. There are some things that, because of Kerbal, we had to uh, compromise on a little bit here and there. And that's all absolutely fine. The thing that I found most fascinating was that we were able to stay afloat despite having some crazy high costs with that 200k per mission modifier. And we should actually get 400k here because the last mission got deleted with the save issue that I talked about previously. It's fine. We should be at 2.4 million at this point with the conclusion of that. So we can just bring that right on in. And that would be like this. So honestly, we're very comfortable financially without doing a single contract. That said, in KSP2, there is no like career mode. There's a science mode. And we'll have to feel out exactly how that works. I haven't decided yet on what the parameters of that campaign is going to be. I'll have to decide that, well tomorrow. So that'll be exciting. That is definitely a tomorrow thing. Well, I'm really pleased with this series overall. Let's hop over to the ISS real quick. It's not perfect in terms of how it's like how it looks visually, but I'm really pleased with how it went. I'm less pleased with how it performs, but uh <laughs> <laughs> the uh, performance here is not great, but we spent a long time constructing this baby, and to be honest, that's realistic. It took a long time to build it in reality as well, and I'm very pleased with how it turned out, ultimately. There's a little bit that's a little janky, like this up here is a little askew. We could fix that, but that sounds like work, so we're not going to be doing that. It's, uh just off a little bit, like 5, 10 degrees, all we'd need to do is rotate it. 
if we had the ability to do that with the arm, I would do it with the arm. But the arm can't grab components that are part of the same ship, and it can't dock components to the same ship, which is very unfortunate because that's the primary use of those. So, uh, yeah, that's very sad. But overall, I'm really pleased with how this series went, and I, I think that this was a really interesting, and at least for me, an educational experience in how a lot of this was done. Granted, it wasn't perfectly accurate, and that's fine. I'm not striving for perfect accuracy here. Looks like our Canadarm has uh, drifted a bit. Okay, cool. Well, it is time to put this series to an end. At long, long, long last. Here we are on episode number, what is this, 231? Okay, yeah. It's, it's not good for the algorithm to go this long. <laughs> No doubt about that. Regardless, it was fun, and I very, very much liked it. You can leave your offerings to the Engagement Gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Atala, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching, especially this late into a series. <laughs> You're a rare person. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.